All right, so in the magical realm of emergency medicine, there are very few unicorns left in our world. One such unicorn is easy appendicitis. Young, healthy patient in their 20s, right lower quadrant belly pain, good history. You get a CT, you get a white count to appease your surgeon. You call them at 11 p.m. and deliver that magical scenario of a one-tweet consult note. Hey, Dr. Surgeon, I've got a previously healthy 25-year-old male with appendicitis by history, exam, labs, and CT. Antibiotics are on board. They're in room 20. Do you have any questions? My expected response is, Rob, great job. Thanks. I'll admit the patient. It's kind of late. I'll take their appendix out in the morning. They'll go home tomorrow. Thank you. What happens when my surgeon slays my unicorn and says, you know what? That sounds like an uncomplicated appendicitis. Go and tell the patient that you're going to give them some IV antibiotics and then a course of oral antibiotics. They can go home, and if they get worse, they should come back to your emergency department or they can follow up with me. My easy dispo has become a challenging dispo. I've got to talk to my patient again, change their plan, reset their expectations, explain to them that my surgeon's not crazy, and tell them that this is something that has some evidence behind it. I have some questions. Is this possible? Is it safe? Is it done? And most importantly, in my Rob-centric world, would I do it? To answer these questions, we're gonna look at two articles and we'll get an opinion from one expert. First article came out last year in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, it was a 25 center study based in the US comparing antibiotics with appendectomy. Primary outcome was the European Quality of Life Five Dimension Score, which is a assessment of health status. It's apparently a standardized scoring system to assess quality of life in a reasonably sciencey manner. They look at five variables of mobility, self-care, usual activities, pain and discomfort, anxiety, and depression. A more understandable secondary outcome that's more translated about 12 patients is ap appendectomy rates in the 90 days following the index visit and complications through 90 days. This study broke with tradition. Previously, the antibiotic versus appendectomy studies excluded appendicolis. They were considered to be part of a complicated presentation of appendicitis. But this study included appendicolis, so we get more of a real-world representation of patients with appendicitis. There were common sense exclusion criteria that included septic shock, peritonitis, and there's some judgment over what is truly peritonitis and its pain threshold dependent. Any patient with a recurrent appendicitis was not enrolled. Anyone with severe phlegmon by CT or surgeon's perspective, any abscess, any free air, and any neoplasm was excluded. Imaging studies were either CT or ultrasound or sometimes both. The antibiotic arm received 24 hours of IV antibiotics, and this 24 hours could either be a legit 24 hours in the hospital on IV antibiotics or a dose of antibiotics that had 24 hours of bioavailability. So a dose of ertapenem in the emergency department that lasts 24 hours satisfies that criteria. Then 10 days of an institutionally appropriate oral antibiotic that covered bowel bugs. 8,168 patients were screened, leaving uh, 1,552 patients after exclusion criteria. Of the 776 patients in each group, just over 200 had appendicolis. So just over a quarter of the patients had what was previously considered to be an exclusion criteria and had at least mildly complicated appendicitis. So again, real world representation of the patients with appendicitis that we see. For those that received antibiotics, 47% of them were discharged from the emergency department, but there was significant variability between centers some centers discharged nobody from the emergency department. Some centers discharged 80% from the emergency department. And across the board, whether it's ED patients or patients hospitalized, 79% of them were discharged within 24 hours. So there's already a risk that our ED stays may be prolonged with this study. Total hospital stay was no different between the two groups. The antibiotic group, 1.33 days. The appendectomy group, 1.30 days. Primary outcome, 
no difference. The European quality of life five dimension score, 0.92 in the antibiotics group and 0.91 in the appendectomy group. The translatable data to be able to tell our patients in terms of the risk of taking antibiotics is an 11% risk of appendectomy at 48 hours, a 20% risk of appendectomy at 30 days, and a 29% risk of appendectomy at 90 days. This is the first sticking point. If your patient comes in for an emergency department visit and spends several thousand dollars to go home on antibiotics, at 90 days, they have a 29% risk of coming back and spending an additional several thousand dollars for a repeat visit for recurrent antibiotics that will then result in surgery. If we had the luxury of living in one of the normal countries with socialized medicine where an ED visit didn't cost several thousand dollars, this would be less of an issue, but this is a big sticking point. For the appendicle patients, they had a 41% risk of appendectomy within 90 days of the index visit versus the non appendicle of patients, 25% risk of appendectomy within 90 days. So these are the two take-home numbers. Uncomplicated appendicitis with an appendicle of 41% risk of appendectomy within three months. Uncomplicated appendicitis without appendicle of 25% risk of appendectomy within the next 90 days. Return visits for any reason, 9% in the antibiotic group, 4% in the appendectomy group, any hospitalization after the index visit, antibiotic group 24%, appendectomy group 5%. The bogeyman of appendicitis is the risk of occult neoplasm. So a neoplasm in the appendix that's not seen on your imaging study that's discovered when you go to the operating room. Nine of the appendectomy patients were found to have an appendiceal neoplasm when they went to the operating room that wasn't seen on CT or ultrasound. Two of the recurrent appendicitis patients were found to have an appendiceal neoplasm in their appendix when they represented with pain within that three month time period. There was no difference in C. diff rates, so no C. diff diff. This makes sense because both groups got a big slug of antibiotics either before going to the operating room or before going home on additional oral antibiotics. So C. diff rates of 0.6 per 100 patients. Let's assume for now that we're accepting the premise that it's not unreasonable to have a trial of antibiotics for management of appendicitis. If we go across the pond to Finland and try to parse out whether we truly need that IV dose, this study published in JAMA this year looked at oral moxie versus IV ertapenem plus levaquin. Every patient got a CT scan. They had tighter exclusion criteria. They excluded patients with appendicolips. Everything else was the same. Excluded abscesses, excluded perforations, excluded neoplasms. The antibiotic strategies, the MOXIE group had 400 milligrams of moxifloxacin a day for seven days. The IV group received two doses of IV ertapenem and then five days of levaquin and five days of metronidazole. So already there's a US-based sticking point that if we do this with an IV strategy, you're having to give two doses of invents, which means giving a dose in the emergency department and either hospitalizing that patient or having them follow up in the emergency department or arranging for them to follow up in an urgent care or in an infusion clinic. Primary outcome for the study was no appendectomy in one year. So they followed these patients out for longer than in the New England Journal study. They screened 3,500 patients, and their screening started with patients that had abdominal pain that were suspected of having appendicitis. So they're catching them before they go to CT, which is why this number gets parsed down so low to 603 eligible patients with CT-proven uncomplicated appendicitis without appendicolis. About 300 in each group. The API rates in the index visit, moxifloxacin, 27 appendectomies, ertapenem, 22 appendectomies. And of those groups, 18 in the moxie group, 11 in the ertapenem group, were found to have complicated appendicitis at the time of going to the operating room on day one. They either had an appendicle that wasn't seen on imaging studies or had a gangrenous appendix or perforation or abscess or tumor. Delayed epi rates were similar, 61 out of 302 for the moxie group, 53 out of 301 for the ertapenem group.
the mean time to appendectomy was 101 days. So we're catching some patients in this group that may have been missed in the New England Journal study who present after that 90-day cutoff. Treatment success was grossly equivalent. Moxifloxacin, 70.2% of patients did not get an appendectomy within the one-year follow-up. Ertapenem, 73.8% of patients did not get an appendectomy within one year of follow-up. Non-inferiority studies, the math confuses me a little bit. Essentially, to prove non-inferiority of the oral antibiotic strategy, they had to have a difference of less than negative 6% between the groups. Their difference was negative 3.6%, so that qualifies. However, the confidence interval also cannot go beyond negative 6%. So because this confidence interval went down to negative 9.7%, they found that the oral MOXIE strategy, despite having a 70.2% success rate, was not non-inferior. All right, so we've answered some of our questions. It's possible. It's safe, it's done in some places, including Europe, and it was done during the US-based study in 25 centers. To help me answer the would I do it question, I reached out to a colleague of mine. This is Dave Morris. He's somewhat of a unicorn amongst trauma surgeons. He's super nice, he's super smart, he's super calm, even in the hairiest of resuscitations. And he's kind enough to help your friendly neighborhood community emergency physician crowdsourced their talk on antibiotics for appendicitis. So I posed this question to him. I said, hey, Dave, you're in my emergency department. I've just diagnosed you with acute appendicitis. Do you want antibiotics and go home? Or do you want surgery? Dave got uncharacteristically angry and sent me a five paragraph ranty email, which was awesome because he was ranting against the topic and not ranting at me. Dave had some issues. His main points were that, firstly, he was angry that the study authors were trying to uncure a surgical disease. He points out that appendicitis shouldn't be managed the same way that diverticulitis does because it's a full thickness bowel issue. Just because things poke out off of the colon doesn't mean you can treat them the same. From a pain control perspective, Dave points out that within the intermountain system, our patients get significant pain relief immediately after their appendectomies. And the median number of pain pills taken postoperatively by our appendicitis patients is two pain pills. So we're decre technically decreasing the use of narcotics and decreasing pain immediately after the appendectomy. The other sticking point Dave had was in terms of the appendiceal bogeyman. The rates of appendiceal cancer and occult malignancy are super low, but they're not zero. The risk of missing that, treating that with antibiotics, and then having that patient later present with widespread peritoneal spread of that cancer are untenable from Dave's perspective. So his take-home point was that if he's in my emergency department and he's got appendicitis, I had better find him a surgeon to take his appendix out. And if I don't, He's going to steal some of my lidocaine, and he'll remove his appendix himself. The other perspective, if we turn to Ian Malcolm, would be that these study authors were so preoccupied with whether they could treat appendicitis with antibiotics that they didn't stop to ask if they should treat appendicitis with antibiotics. I have some caveats for you. In an overwhelmed healthcare system, such as we saw during the COVID pandemic, where availability of inpatient beds is limited or where patients are appropriately concerned about their risk of contracting COVID by being inside of a facility. It's not unreasonable if the surgeon agrees and the patient agrees and they have the health literacy to be able to understand that antibiotics for appendicitis is a trial of management and that they need to come back and could incur additional expense if they come back for appendectomy is a reasonable choice. Here in Salt Lake City, we're at any point in time minutes away from a devastating earthquake that will cripple the city and overwhelm the dozen hospitals that we have in the Salt Lake Valley. So same thing. If we get our big earthquake and our hospitals are overwhelmed and someone has the misfortune of having had an appendicle get knocked into their appendix by the earthquake and gets appendicitis, a strategy of oral antibiotics is not unreasonable. When we start traveling again and you get appendicitis away from your home base, 
a trial of antibiotics is not unreasonable, but it shouldn't be the new standard of care. So my take home point is that we've been able to save one of the last remaining unicorns of emergency medicine. And antibiotics are reasonable only in a set of predefined circumstances. Thank you.